everyone. So today I'm officially doing my Miku chair review. If you haven't already heard about the ordeal that was the Miku chair, I don't like do not know how to start this. So a lot has happened in the last week. It's been kind of a, a journey for me, I would say. Um, I'm gonna give you some background. If you wanna skip ahead to the review, here's where the time the timestamp will be for that. But basically, I, I've been sleeping super poorly for like the last three weeks. I don't know if it's uh, COVID and quarantining or just general anxiety or what, but my, my sleep has been trash. It's been so bad. So I'm just like a general layer of tired all of the time. I ordered this chair September 22nd and I frankly didn't really think I was going to receive it. Because I ordered it through AliExpress, I've had hit or miss experiences. I know a lot of people have only positive experiences with AliExpress. I've had hit or miss in terms of stuff actually getting to me. And because I've never seen anyone open Owned this chair before, I was pretty convinced it didn't actually exist or it was gonna be like a kid's chair or there was gonna be some other thing where like some other reason this wasn't gonna be what I expected basically or what I wanted. I ordered the chair September 22nd and it took a while to ship and then when it did ship, the shipping information didn't update for months. Basically, I got the alert that it was leaving the country, so it was leaving China, that's where it shipped from, and then I didn't receive any other notification for two months. So I was pretty solidly convinced, just because nothing updated, that it probably <laughs> wasn't coming, that it got lost, something with COVID happened, and you know, like I understand shipping times are really long right now, I'm not trying to say, but like I got to a point where I was like, nothing has updated, like did it take two months for this to get to the US? Apparently it did, because I got the notification that it was in the US, my tracking number worked for USPS, and I was like, oh my god, this actually exists. All that happened, and the day I was supposed to receive this chair, I, I had actually missed it the day before. I had, they had came out to deliver it. I had been home all day. I was like, I'm ready to get this chair. I'm so excited. And then it was like one o'clock and I was like, man, I'm really stinky. I want to take a shower. And I was like, they probably won't come now. Usually mail doesn't come till like three or later in the afternoon, so I should be okay. And sure enough, when I'm in the shower, they come and they leave a notice for me. And I was like, no. Um, so I get my notice. And then another layer of like, there's so many layers of my experience trying to get the share is I, I went online to try to either schedule a redelivery or uh, schedule a pickup for it. And for some reason, it kept saying that my address didn't match the address on the package, which isn't tr true, it was the same address. So there must have been some weird thing about the way it was written. Actually, I think the address was written on the side of the box incorrectly, which was part of the confusion around it. But basically, I couldn't online uh, sign up for it to be redelivered, which was my original plan. So then I was like, well, hey, it says I should be able to pick it up tomorrow. Post office is closed tomorrow. This was on a Friday. So I was like, I'll just go on Monday and pick it up. So Monday, you know, I'm, I'm doing my work and I was like, oh, I should make a TikTok about this. This will be a fun story for my friends, which is like what my TikTok has been used for. Basically, um, it's just like, I want to make funny stuff that my friends will enjoy because that's mostly who follows me on TikTok at this point. So I make my TikTok and I love telling stories. So I like made it really fun and I posted it. And I kind of put my phone away because again, I was expecting, hey, just my friends are gonna see this. It's not gonna, you know, be a big deal. So I got back to working. And then eventually I was like, oh, you know, I wanna go on TikTok. I wanna like see stuff. And it's like going wild. I've never had a piece of media that I put online get so widespread, I guess, as that TikTok. And I, you know, I've been making YouTube videos since I was. 12, like, sorry, someone keeps walking by my window. I'm making YouTube videos since I was 12. I've been on Instagram. I've, I've been on like every form of social media. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And it was really stressful to be frank. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful for like everyone being very kind to me. And you know, some people were complimenting me, which was super sweet of them and being really invested in the chair. Cause you know, I'm also really invested in the chair, but it's really intimidating having all of that attention when you weren't expecting it at all. So I was like constantly refreshing my phone for the the rest of the day being like, oh my god. So eventually it gets to a point where I am able to go out and try and pick up the chair. So drive my way to my post office. I live in a pretty rural area. We have one post office for our, our area. So I drive out there. It's really busy, of course, because it's the holiday season. I wait in line and I go up and I'm like, hey, I'm you know here to pick up this package, have my ID and my like package slip for them. And lady goes to the back and she comes back out again and she's like, hey, we, we don't have it. I think it went out for delivery again. And I was like, well, poop, because A, I didn't 
sign up for redelivery and B, I had made this TikTok that was blowing up and all these people were expecting me to come back within like half an hour and have footage of this chair that I can't get footage of because I don't have it. So I was really like kind of stressing myself out about that because it's, it's really intimidating again having all those people like waiting and being like where are you and I didn't want to like post any more TikToks because I didn't want to lead people on and be like ooh come back for part three because that feels really like sleazy I didn't I didn't think it would you know turn into like this long affair I thought it would literally be like TikTok with me without the chair and then with the chair um, so I was feeling really guilty about that I was like oh shoot these people are gonna be upset so I eventually did make another TikTok being like hey I'm not dead because someone asked if <laughs> Miku killed me which I thought was so hilarious so I was like like, hey, I'm not dead. I just don't have the chair yet. They sent it out again. I gotta wait. And then I was just like staring outside waiting to see the male person. And it, like it was one o'clock and I was like, where are they coming? Um, so it was around three o'clock. I did see the truck come up and I was like, yes, yes, yes. And I didn't want to go down to talk to them because like a COVID, I'm not going to like put myself in front of someone. Like that's just not social distancing. It's also not very polite. And then B, I was like, you know, if they have it, they're gonna bring it up. Like I don't, I trust my male person, you know? So sure enough, I was like standing at my window watching them and they drove away. <laughs> They did not have my package. At that point I was really frustrated because I've had all sorts of weird things happen in the past to be honest with USPS and international deliveries especially. Um, especially with me going to pick them up and then not realizing it was an international delivery and it was in the wrong, like little things like that. And at the end of the day USPS is uh, in my opinion a fantastic organization. I super appreciate the work they do and it is a very busy season for them. So I do not blame anyone for what happened. Like yes, there was a mix up here, but like I'm not mad, <laughs> you know, life happens. And so I was able to get off work a little bit early and head right to the post office again around four o'clock and be like, hey, this happened. I was supposed to get my package, it's not here. And sure enough, again, they wrote the address incorrectly on the side of the box. So if they attempted to deliver it, it apparently was to a different apartment, um, which thankfully I don't, I don't think they actually attempted a redelivery. I don't know. I think this was something, something happened again. It was a mix up. So I was able to pick it up and it was this big box and I was by myself. <laughs> so I was like lugging this giant box up the three flights of stairs to my apartment, but I was so excited to finally have the chair. I was also so exhausted. It had been such a long day for me. i had been so stressed. Like I had work stress going on. I had this TikTok situation happening, which was again, so exciting, but also like so overwhelming. And I finally had my chair. I was so excited. So basically why the footage in my unboxing is so blurry is that I was so tired and my eyesight frankly isn't very good. So I just couldn't tell in the viewfinder on my camera that it was out of focus. Um, so I'm gonna narrate over some of the unboxing here. So it came in this larger box. Again, I was really worried that it wasn't actually going to be this chair, that it was gonna be some other chair, that it you know it wasn't gonna be as pictured. I, I can see there's teal in there. Oh no. Oh, it's kind of dirty. But it looks, it's a chair. It's a chair. All of the white printing on it is sticky. That's terrifying. Oh, and I feel like I really, in a way, lucked out that it is essentially exactly as pictured. Um, so I, I got all my pieces of it out. It's this beautiful teal cover color. I'm a huge fan of it. And it was pretty easy to put together as well. I had to attach a piece to the base that then connected to the bottom of the chair that I'd put all the wheels onto. Um, then had to attach a piece to the back and connect those two and then connect the arms to the chair. So it was basically unscrewing any of the screws that were already in the chair putting another piece in and then screwing it on. Um, the way it was packaged was really smart. All the, again, screws were already attached to the chair, so you just had to unscrew them and then use them to screw the different pieces on. It came with a pair of gloves, which felt very nice. Uh, and it's a little instruction pamphlet, which I don't actually have with me. Even though the instructions were in Chinese, they were still easy to follow. They had good, clear pictures. It's kind of small. Let's, I'm gonna sit on it for the first time. It is sticky, which is weird. I'm like nervous. So I had my chair made. Uh, some, some things to note is the vinyl on it was sticky. It seems like it still is kind of sticky. Some people recommend getting baby powder. I haven't bought any baby powder yet. I haven't had the chance to. So I, I was able to put the chair together. 
pretty easily. And then I was almost intimidated to actually start using it. Um, some immediate things to note is I do think I'm a little bit too tall for this chair. I would basically recommend this chair for anybody under five foot seven, <laughs> essentially. Um, Cause like while my head does hit pretty much right above, like the pillow is like at the lower part of my neck and my head. Like, or the upper part of my neck and the lower part of my head. So it's comfortable, but it isn't, it doesn't feel necessarily like it's quite built for my size. Some other things to know is it doesn't raise very high and it also does have the feature to um, lean it further back, which I also have had a little bit of struggle with it moving around. Um, also, if you're like me and you ever put your palms on the handles of your chair so you can push yourself up and put your legs on your chair and sit crisscross applesauce because I can't sit with good posture, Sometimes the force of pushing my hands against the handles of the chair pulls the back of the chair forward so it kind of like pushes me all forward and that's just a habit I've had from past chairs. Not like I should even sit crisscross applesauce in my chairs, that's just my poor posture habit basically of how I sit. But that's something to keep in mind. I haven't had any problem with it being a squeaky chair. It's for the most part very silent. And then we get in terms of the comfort. Now I am not a like ergonomics expert in any way, um, so this is all going to come just from my personal perspective. Take everything with a grain of salt. Um, but when it comes to comfort, this isn't, I think, going to be a long-term, very comfortable chair. The bottom cushion is gonna need a little bit more support. I think I'm gonna get some other cushion I can put underneath myself, um, just because I can already tell that this is going to be something that over time is gonna get compacted. It's gonna feel very hard over time. That's at least my feeling so far on it. I do work from a desk. I do have a standing desk, so sometimes I'm standing, sometimes I'm sitting. It's not like eight hours of purely sitting, but it, I it do sit in it for a long time, basically. Um, and I do find over time that it is not the most comfortable chair to sit in. I do like the back cushion. Um, I'm finding that to be comfortable. I'm also finding occasionally taking it out and just like leaning further back um, to be comfortable, like refresh every once in a while. So I don't know what that says about the chair or my posture or me, but that is something I noted. Another thing about this chair with any chairs that are like this pleather material is it gets really sweaty. Um, it, it should, like, there's no other way for me to put it. It, it's super, it does, it's not like breathable in any way. So it gets very sweaty. I think this is probably a problem with most of this like pleather leather style racing chairs. Um, I don't know if I, I haven't checked with my boyfriend about how he feels about the secret lab chair he has but in terms of this chair definitely not a breathable chair. And speaking of Secret Lab, um, like I just said, my boyfriend does have a Secret Lab chair, which is what I would consider to be one of the more higher end gaming racer style chairs. Comparatively, that chair is much more comfortable than this one. Like if they had made a Miku chair, like you know I would have been probably on board with that. But I also just don't want a mostly dark or black chair, which is again part of why this had really strong appeal for me. But also really you can't see the chair behind me if I'm sitting right in front of it. Because again, I think I'm a little too big. I'm a little too big. I'm a little too tall. My thighs that fit comfortably though, and I'm a bit on the larger end of things, like I would, I would say I'm mid-size, like I typically uh, sizes are really hard for me right now because my body's been fluctuating a lot, but I, I would say I wear a large to maybe in some cases extra large when it comes to my bottoms. So like that's comfortable. Again, if anybody basically was bigger than me in any way, I think that this chair would be too small, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is when it's, you know, I'm ordering from an overseas company that's probably market audience tends to be smaller than me. <laughs> for some reason, not everything is made specifically for me. So I, I fear long term, this probably isn't going to be the most comfortable chair and I am going to have to think of some workarounds to make it more comfortable. Um, I do have my old chair here still with me, so if I need to do a switch off, that's still an option that I have, thankfully. But it is very cute. This is a very cute chair. Uh, Price-wise, again, I think if other gaming chair companies started putting out more than just like one pink chair, <laughs> um, it would be more definitely more worth buying a, a more reputable um, gaming chair, again, from Secret Lab or 
uh, a similar company that has a bit of a more better reputation when it comes to comfort because this was I think I paid $265 for it that did include shipping which like thank god I have a feeling shipping would have been a huge chunk out of that because it, it was a very big box shipped overseas that it that was a very large chunk of money and with that I think it would have been almost a little bit better to save up a little bit more and get a secret lab chair, which I think are around $295. So if you're gonna do the splurge, I would say do the splurge for something with a bit more comfort. Part of the excitement again with this chair, which I say in this TikTok, is I'd never seen it before in person. I'd never, I'd never seen any human being have this chair. So that was just a very, very exciting aspect of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them down below. In the bio, I'll also have a link to the chair itself, as well as my other social medias. Please feel free to follow me around the internet, follow me on TikTok if you wanna see me go through the process of redecorating my desk area. Uh, that's been really fun, been doing some kind of crafty stuff. But like, Miku's so cute. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see just more general kind of nerdy content. Let me know what you'd like to see more of at this point. I'm very overwhelmed with the attention that has ha happened on TikTok, so. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you are all having a fantastic day. I hope you're staying healthy and staying safe and wearing a mask and doing everything that we need to do to get through quarantine together. She's got a gun. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.